Let us pray. Father God, once again, we come before you to give you praise, glory, and honor, and thanks, Lord God, because you are such a wonderful God. We love you, O oh Heavenly Father. We just lift your name up, Lord God, and we just give you praise, O oh Heavenly Father. As the words say, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him, O oh Heavenly Father. So we are trusting you, in you, O oh Heavenly Father, to do and to do what all that we need in you, O oh Heavenly Father. So we say thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. We lift you up and we praise you, Lord God. We love you and we adore you. You are such a wonderful and awesome God, O oh Heavenly Father. And now, oh Heavenly Father, as we go into the study of your word again, we ask for understanding, revelation, knowledge of the word, and we thank you for the teacher, Lord God. We thank you for our pastor. He's come forth to break your word, Lord God, so that we are able to understand it, how we can live a holy life as you have instructed us to, oh Heavenly Father. And now, Lord God, as our children go back to school, the students go back, Lord God, we're going to ask for uh, peace upon them. We ask that they be obedient to their teachers, Lord God, and, and we just uh, ask for a fresh anointing upon them as they walk into the classroom, Lord God, and not only on them, O oh Heavenly Father, but for the teachers, Lord God. Give them the understanding for the students, Lord God. Let them not be so hasty, Lord God, just to see color or, or race or whatever, Lord God, but let them see a person that you have made in your own image, oh Heavenly Father. Let them teach, Lord God, the word that the words and the, the work that you have given with the story within upon them, Lord, to teach each one, Lord Heavenly Father. So we're going to bind the enemy from around our students, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, for their protection as they go to school, Lord God. And we ask for protection for the teachers as well, oh Heavenly Father. So we ask, Lord God, for their, uh, their just peace and and just unity there at the schools, O oh Heavenly Father, from the superintendent on down to the, to the teachers, O oh Heavenly Father. So again, we thank you, Lord God, and we praise you, Lord God. And we ask, Lord God, that our students have a good year. They do what is uh, placed upon them to do, Lord God. They study, and Lord God, you will reward them, O oh Heavenly Father. So again, we thank you, and not only our uh, students that are going to school, but also our college students, Lord God. Bless them, Lord God. Some may think they are grown, Lord God, but yet, Lord God, they still need one another, O oh Heavenly Father. So I ask, Lord God, that you direct their path, Lord God, as well, O oh Heavenly Father. Keep them, O oh Lord God. So we'll always give you praise, we'll always give you glory, and we we thank you, Lord God, because truly, this is a day that you have made, and we are rejoicing in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Maison, for the prayer. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Welcome to TNT uh, Tuesday night teaching as we come to share word from the book of Ephesians chapter number five, uh, beginning with verse number 21. Ephesians chapter number five, beginning with verse number 21 through verse number three, 33. And we'll be reading from uh, the New Living Translation of the Bible, amen. Let us see what God is saying through his word today. And further, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. For wives, this means submit to your husband as to the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of his body, the church. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. For husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ, hallelujah, loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, 
washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. No one hates his own body but feeds and cares for it, just as Christ cares for the church. And we are members of his body. And the scripture says, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. This is a great mystery, but it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. Finally, so again, I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself. And the wife must re respect, respect, respect her husband. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let everyone say amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for the prayer that's already been heard and answered by Reverend Mazon, God, we thank you, dear God, for bringing us together one more time to hear your word. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. You are our rock and our redeemer. It is in the name of Jesus, God, we continue to look to the hills from which cometh thy help, knowing that all of our help comes from the Lord. It is in Jesus' name that you bless us, that we're guided by the Holy Spirit in all that we do and say. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. From the scriptures that have been read, I want to look at the title for today from Ephesians 5, verses 21 through 33, a spirit or spirit-guided relationships. Spirit-guided relationships. Not all relationships have been guided by the spirit. I'll say it again, spirit-guided relationships. With that in mind, not all relationships have been guided through the Spirit of God. There are all kinds of spirits out there that causes confusion, that causes pain, that causes us to act out of character. There are all kinds of spirits that does not res reflect, reflect, reflect uh, that God is with us or we are with God. Uh, so I just want to remind you that we need to have spirit-guided relationship. That is, our relationships with one another as spouse, as, as husband and wife, as children of God, as husband and wife nurturing children, should be guided by the Holy Spirit. I want to go from verse number 21 through verse number 33, and, and let's just see what God is saying in each verse that can help us on today. Verse 21 says, and further submit. And a lot of people have problems submitting. It says submit to one another. It didn't say husband, submit to your wife. Wife, submit to your husband. This starts us off letting us know it's uh, equal playing ground. And it tells us that we should submit to one another. And then it tells us why. It tells us to what? Submit to one another. It tells us to why? Out of reverence for Christ. So it's not about you. It's not about her. Not about him but it's about us reverencing Christ. Out of all the things that we do in life, we ought to give God praise. We ought to give him honor. We ought to give him glory. We ought to reverence him. We ought to honor him. We ought to respect him. And because God tells us to do it, it's just like when your mom, your mom said, take out the trash. You reverence her. You might not want to take out the trash, but you reverence her, so you take out the trash. 
you're a young lady at home, you, was, you wanted to eat or your mother didn't have time to cook, uh, Sister Michelle, she tell you, she say, I need you to fix some dinner for everybody. And you, you there, you saying to yourself, I got homework to do. You know, we, we were going to go to the ball game. We were going to the movie. And mother looks up at one time and said, make sure it's done. Make sure everybody has some. You may not have wanted to do it, but because of reverence for her, you know who bought your school clothes. <laughs> Somebody say amen. You, you know who were going to give you permission or not give you permission to go to the prom. You, you know that if you didn't, you didn't already have no allowance or no money or no job, you couldn't pay your way in the ball game unless she give you some money or your father give you some money. So out of reverence, out of appreciation, out of honor, out of respect, out of love for them, you would do it. That's the way it is here. So the scripture starts off and say, you got you to you 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 submit to one another. That's a hard word for some people. And then you're doing it out of reverence for Christ. Okay? The next verse says, for wives, this means submit to your husband as to the Lord. Lord. You should do it because you love your husband. You respect your husband. You think that what they ask you to do will help the relationship and help the family or help you or help him, right? But if you can't see that, you still ought to do it out of reverence for Christ. What your husband should be sharing with you should be to build you up or to make a situation better for the family. Not to make it worse for you or to, or, or to embarrass you. So, so Christ is not asking us to follow something that's not right. Paul isn't asking. But we're praying that our husbands... Our wives' lives line up with the word and the will of God. Can I get a witness? I know somebody saying glory, hallelujah, from at home. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So the next verse says this to us. For a husband is the head of his wife, as Christ is the head of the church. Know who's in charge. He is the savior of his body, the church. We, re we respect one another. But at the same time, we depend on one another. And at the same time, we know who can carry what part of the load that they can carry. That's the best way I can put that. We all can't carry the same weight. Sometimes we try, and it'll break you down. <laughs> when things are not done in order, uh, at the right time, in the right way, it'll break you down. Put, put that one back up for me. And, and then it says, it says, it says, as the church submits to Christ, well, for her husband is the head of the, his wife, as Christ is the head of the church, he is the savior of his body, the church. Everything belonged to God. God created us in his image, in his likeness. And God has a sequence for everything that's being done. Just like he said in, in, on the first day, let there be light, and there was light. Well, are you with me? He, he had a sequence. He had a method of doing things. And he says when it comes to relationship, when it comes to the church being the, the bride of Christ, he, he's saying to us, hallelujah, that there ought to be a method. There ought to be a sequence. There ought to be a way where we can help one another instead of hurt one another. A way where we can walk together instead of walking away from one another. A way we can build one another up instead of tearing one another down. Lord have mercy. Next verse. As the church submits to Christ, we are all under the authority of God in Christ, right? So you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. We have to look to God. We have to submit to God. We have to submit to Christ. And, and, and here's the thing. A, a, a good husband, a, 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 a spirit-filled husband, a, a spirit-guided husband will not lead you astray. They will not hurt you. They will not mess up things for the family. 
if they walk in Christ, hallelujah, then what they do is to benefit you and to benefit the family. Now, if they ain't walking with Christ, now you got problems. I'm going to tell it like it is. You got problems if they're not walking with Christ. So the next verse, verse 25 says this. For husbands, this means love your wife. Somebody said love your wife. Just as Christ loved the church. Christ loved the church. Gave it, gave it all for the church. For all of us. He gave up his life for her. That's what it says in the text. So we ought to be able to, we should be willing to sacrifice. Somebody said marriage is a sacrifice. We got we to gotta be willing to sacrifice. It's hard, but it's fair. We got to be willing to sacrifice. We got to, sometimes we got to bend over backwards. Sometimes we got to put up with some things. Sometimes we got to know to close our mouth. Sometimes we got to know when to walk away. Sometimes we got to just throw our hands up and say, Lord, have mercy. Sometimes we got to say, Lord, strengthen me, Lord. But don't curse nobody out. Don't put your hands on nobody. And don't go running away. Every time you get mad, you, I'm leaving. Don't do that. Don't do that. Somebody say, help me, Lord. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something. Don't go in there. Every time you disagree, somebody got to slip on the couch. I ain't never slept on the couch. Never. And I never plan on sleeping on the couch. The couch is for sitting down. Somebody say amen. Next verse. I know y'all want me to move on now. To make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. We, we want one another holy and clean. But the only way that happens is through the word of God, through the will of God. The Holy Spirit cleanses us. Hallelujah. When we, when we have been covered by the blood, when we are walking in the spirit, we can be cleansed. When we're walking in the spirit, carefully, listen, we, we can be cleansed because we don't mind acknowledging when we're wrong. We, we don't mind, we don't mind uh, allowing another person or the spouse to, to, to take control of certain things because they do better at it than we do. Got to submit. We got to submit. Some things... Some, some, in some relationship, some people take care of the bills better than others. In, in some relationship, one person is better at buying groceries than the other. Are y'all with me? Um, one person knows how to discipline the children just a little bit different and better than the other. Let's be honest. We're not the same. We're not the same. We're not the same. One person cooks better than the other. Amen. Amen. I thank God for Sister Jones. I, I'm going to cook breakfast and I'm getting out of there. I'm, somebody else can have it from there. Somebody say amen. But some folk don't cook breakfast. Amen. Amen. Verse 27 says, he did this to present her to himself. It's for the glory of God. To as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Well, you want to put them on the right path. You, 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 in, in our kindness, our submissiveness, our knowing each other's strengths and weakness will put us on the right path and, and not allow things to be messed up. So without spot or wrinkle or any other blemish, it'll be perfect, whole, unique, satisfying. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. Don't provoke, don't allow your actions to provoke your spouse. Can't put it no better than that. Amen? Amen. Or your conversation to provoke your spouse. Don't, don't, don't use words that you don't want to be used or said to you. And remember that, right? Amen. Build them up. Don't break them down. Verse 28. In the same way, husbands ought to love your wives. As they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. 
And I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't say it no better for nobody else, but I love Roy Jones. And I, I love my body, I, I, love, I love everything about me. So I try to take care of me. And the Bible is saying that if you love yourself, you ought to be able to love your wife or your husband the same way. Are you with me? You, you, you're going to take care of yourself. I'm going to make sure uh, that, that I eat the right food. I'm going to make sure I try to get some rest now. Somebody said, thank you, Jesus. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make sure that if it's certain things I want to wear, I'm going to have it. Are you, are you with me? So we ought to be as kind and loving and encouraging to one another as we are to ourselves. I can't put it no better than that. Amen. No one, somebody said no one, hates his own body but feeds and cares for it just as Christ cares for the church. God is taking care of us because he loves us. He's been patient with us because he loves us. He gives us strength, he comforts us, he keeps us, he sustains us because he loves us. That's the way we should be one another. We should comfort one another, encourage one another, strengthen one another, be willing to listen to one another. Amen? Amen. And we are members, not individuals, but members of of his body. Amen. We're members of his body. We are members of Christ's body. We are members of the body of the church. As the scripture says, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife. And the two are united into one. Lord have mercy. You don't, you don't run home with your problems anymore. Telling your mother everything happened in your house. You're telling your father everything happened to you. There are some things they can help us with. But certain things you need to keep within the house, keep within your heart, and you need to be able to share with one another. Part of the biggest problems in relationship, and we all know it, we all have a problem with it, is communication. Either someone says the wrong thing or someone don't say nothing. They don't want to talk about it or when they talk about it, they go overboard. So we got to be careful how we communicate with one another. And, and, and uh, we got to be careful that we don't put everybody else in our business. Because now we are one, not, not mama, not daddy. Daddy ain't going to cook your breakfast, and mama ain't going to cook your breakfast. Now, some of them do it, but they'll get tired and tell you go home. <laughs> so, so make sure that you treat one another right. Uh, treat one another like you want to be treated. Amen? Here's one of the hardest things or, or biggest things is we have not learned to forgive one another. Okay, uh, and we've not learned when to be silent and when to talk. Okay, this is a great mystery, but it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. Just like husband and wife are one, so is the Christ, Jesus Christ, and the church are one. You can't separate Christ from the church. Jesus says, upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus said he gave his life for the church. He laid down his life. He laid it down. He laid it down. He said, I have the right to lay it down and to pick it up again. But he laid his life down for us. We ought to appreciate it. We ought to celebrate it. Are y'all with me? And so, so, so just as Christ loved the church, we call the, the Christian, the church, the children of God, the exclusive, the called out, the followers of Christ, the disciples of Christ. We all call on the Lord for deliverance. We, we call on the Lord for direction. We call on the Lord 
uh, for protection. We, we call on the Lord because we say in a song, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. That's the way. Really, listen. That's the way your relationship should be with your spouse. I know it. Just throw your hand up and say, God, work on me. Work on me. Work on me, God. Work on me. And say, God, work on her as well, Lord. Don't forget her. Yeah, somebody say hallelujah. And say, God, don't, don't forget him, Lord. Work on him. We all need some work. But the only way we can do it, it goes back to one of the verses we read earlier, is to be guided through the Holy Spirit, to be guided and led by the word of God. I used to say to people, uh, who had a spouse that drank or, or was overly indulged in alcohol, they would, they would drink too much. Have you ever been there? And I say, um, you're not going to get nobody saved by pasting scriptures on a beer can. No, that ain't going to get it. No, you, you got to pray for them. You got to love them. You got to forgive them. And you just got to show them that there's a better way. It takes patience. Am I right about it? It takes wisdom. It takes courage. And God knows we wait for deliverance. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I know they, howl, they shouting all about the TVs and, and everything right now. Amen. So again, I say each man must love his wife. As he loves himself. That's why, that's why you can make it if you love yourself. And his wife must respect. Somebody say respect. Her husband. You got to show your wife you love her. And you got to tell her. Y'all, some women know about it. They know what I'm talking about. But the brother, if you don't tell him you love him, you still better respect him. When you start disrespecting the brother by words and deeds, you're in trouble. You can say I love you, but if you disrespect him, you're in trouble. So we got to love one another. Somebody say love one another. And then we got to be guided by the Holy Spirit. It takes patience and hard work. It takes strength and hard work. It takes courage and hard work. But if we stay in the will of God, if we stay in the word of God, and walk in the spirit of God, and three points right there, you will be blessed. God will see you through. If I was a singer, if I was a singer, I'd sing the sound and say, Jesus will see you through, no matter what the world may do. Let's trust in him both day and night, and Jesus will be your guide in light. My time is up. This is Dr. Jones. I love you. I want to pray for you. I want to invite you to Christ. I want you to know that you, in order to make it in your relationships, you have to have a spirit-guided relationship. A spirit-guided relationship. You need to be led by the Holy Spirit in all you do and all you say. And the Holy Spirit can give you peace and joy and renewal. And he'll give you strength. And you can make it. You got to love one another. You got to respect one another. And you do have to submit to one another. Doors of the church are open. They've been open for over 2,000 years. The scripture says God's. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible says that by faith through grace you are saved. I want you to know that you can accept Jesus Christ today as Lord and Savior. If you believe that Jesus is Lord and that God has raised him from the dead.
If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you can be saved. You can be saved. If you're looking for a church home, I would love to be your pastor. St. James would love to be your church family. If you're looking for a place, go to St. James AME Titusville.org. Come, let us know. Let us know on Facebook. Let us know. Come by the church. We have someone here every day. We'll walk with you, talk with you, pray with you, encourage you. But I believe that God has something better for you. May God bless you. May God keep you. You have an opportunity to give. We want to put it on the screens. Uh, if you want to give, you can give through Cash App at St. James AME Titusville. Or you can text to give at 321-323-3898. You can give online if you just go to St. James AME Titusville.org. Online giving and you can be a blessing. If you want to send it by mail, it's 625 Dominic Avenue in Titusville, Florida. You can come by and bring it in person, or you can give it on Sunday morning. May the Lord bless you, and may the Lord keep you. God, thank you for hearing us. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you, God. But we need you as we endeavor to keep the faith as we walk in the spirit, as we live in the spirit, God, as we submit to one another, as we're guided in our relationships through the Holy Spirit, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and the glory. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you is my prayer, and we'll see you soon.